interrupt our program to bring you this important message. Yo, it's Remember the Show. Slick with the flows, where the sparring can go. Who's gonna be on, man, you never will know. Guess you better tune in, cause we live from Chicago. Bilal Muhammad, that's the king of the tweets. Jason Manic looks like John, step his hands to his feet. Every Thursday, we gonna give you a treat. It's Remember the Show, hit play and repeat. Uh. And retweet, and retweet, and retweet, and retweet. It's remember the show, hit play and repeat. Huh? Ah, yes. What is up, everybody? Welcome back. Episode 120. Remember the show. Jason Anik joined as always. By the UFC's number one welterweight contender, Bilal Muhammad. You know, we do our shows on Thursday. We take off Thanksgiving like the rest of you. I hope you all had a good Thanksgiving. Bully B probably didn't. Probably didn't eat anything. Looking lean as anything. I know you're fully immersed in training. Great to see you as always. How you doing, man? What's up, my brother? Yeah, you already know. Uh, Staying in the grind. Keep working. Keep getting better. Man, honestly, I feel bad for whoever wins December 16th. (laughs) Because there's going to be a whole... A whole new level to what I'm going to do to them. I love hearing that. You know that's music to my ears, you know, and, and we're going to get to your fight. Let's just get right into the topics right out of the gate because we're going to talk a lot about Bala Muhammad and the welterweight championship coming up December 16th. But I got to start here. The Professional Fighters League. And before we talk about the acquisition of Bellator, what is it, PF Latour? <laughs> before we talk about the acquisition of Bellator, I just have to say, for me, whenever I think about the B- PFL, the absolute first thought is Lewis Taylor winning the championship. Bala Muhammad in the octagon is happy as probably as I've ever seen you for your boy Lou. So that's where I'm going first, but I digress. So the PFL acquires Bellator, you know, PFL backed by the Saudi Arabia sovereign wealth fund, um, just re-signed with the mothership, the mothership for those of you youngins is ESPN. PFL just re-signed with ESPN. So, I mean, great opportunity for the promotion, for the fighters. You know, I, I'm a little curious about the impact in the UFC. Luke Thomas, you know, put out there, like, I wonder, you know, Dana White probably doesn't like this. And I was genuinely curious, like, you know, why? Why? I feel like the UFC certainly lands on their feet. But big moments for the PFL Bellator. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it's huge to have both those companies come together. And just for the fighters over there, like, the the matchups are going to be great. We've seen the PFL right now, the matchups that they were going to make the champion versus champion. I think it's going to be sick. Uh, I just hope that they add those two weight classes because 135 is so good and stacked at uh, Bellator. I think adding a tournament in, and there's so many guys outside of the UFC right now. I have 135. They don't have places to go. So for PFL to bring them up, making that happen, that'll be huge. Patchy mix might be the best Bantam way out here. Uh, legit, Cody. But, uh, yeah, I would want to see him fight guys like Ab- Johnny Eblin at 185. They don't have a, a middleweight division. And I said it, bro. I was like, bro, PFL has a middleweight champion. His name is Lewis Taylor. Yeah. <laughs> Lewis, Lewis Taylor, let's run it. Like, you hey, know, I'll tell you. Not. Like, yeah, why yeah. not? Uh, you got – what's called it just got there, Derek Brunson. He looked great in this fight uh, that weekend. I mean, and he he just looks like a whole other person, I think, going to PFL maybe uh, – transformed him and made him like a hyping him up right just a, a change of scenery it just gives you a, a a new leaf on life and uh it makes you want to just try harder he said yeah i've been jogging 10 to 15 miles i've been working harder and it's just like refreshing for him i feel but he looked good he, he dominated his fight i think him against johnny evelyn would be a good one uh, but i think they do need to add a middleweight division there if you're going to have these tournaments for all these divisions what's the extra two million dollars adding 135 and 185 for you guys I agree. Well, either way, I can't wait to see what happens. I'm excited for Kenny Florian. And, and certainly, if you guys over at PFL, I know you're going to have a lot of pre, pre-fight pre shows, post-fight shows. Me and my boy, Bala Muhammad, you know, we'll check in, okay? We're yeah, happy we to check like in. I was going to get both the guys in this week. I think I'm going to try to get him next week. Uh, I wanted to get the Jason Jackson, who just won the welterweight title, and then yes. Ipa from, uh, from Ipa PFL. Sangana, yeah. yeah, that's crazy. How you could go from – the welterweight division in the UFC to go into the light heavyweight division and winning it there. His story is just crazy. That's like another one of those like Francis and Ganyu movie stories where you're like, he was like, after he got cut from the UFC, he said he was living in his car and he was on his way to quit. And then all of a sudden he gets the call to be on a challenger series. He won that. Then he kept going, winning, winning, winning and million dollars. 
Unbelievable. And, you know, part of what made that knockout uh, at the hands of Joaquin Buckley, that, that to Kasanga, what made that so great was that Impa did have some hype at that time, you know? So I'm happy that he got back to the top of the mount. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he, and he's a good guy. I've met him a couple of times there and he's such a like down to earth, nice guy, uh, very like religious. And it's cool to, to see a guy like keep his focus even after losing it all. And it's like, you think it's the end of the world, but I tell these guys like a loss, you got to learn from a loss. You got to, keep grinding after a loss and just growing and keep getting better. And just understanding that God's plan is always going to be the right plan, no matter what. And now look at you, you're, you're a PFL champion, million dollars exactly. and calling Francis and got you. Yeah. I, right. I love it. All right. So let's move on to the number one welterweight contender. And I like how the topics look where you sort of have Bilal and then December 16th creeping. Um, but I have to say, so Bilal and I were in Milwaukee doing a PFC nine last weekend, the week before I lose track all these weeks, but Brendan Allen, if you're watching, you know, we went to find a big screen TV, went out to eat, to find a, a restaurant to watch, you know, so we're both sitting on the same side of the booth so we can watch your fight. I had to ask them to put on ESPN plus everybody asking Bilal Muhammad for his autograph. And he's a lefty. You got to love when you ask someone for an autograph and they're a lefty, by the way. But anyway, I just want to tell that story because shout out Brendan Allen. We watch for you, your boy Bilal watch for you. But so you look great, man. You look super lean. The welterweight championship of the world is two weeks from now. I'm sure that's as motivating as ever for you. I'm sure you're in the mode as if you're fighting in two weeks. Just want to check in with remember the name. How's it going overall? Yeah. You know, for me, it's just getting better. Keep grinding. I know my next opponent's going to be one of two guys. So it's just focusing on those two guys, staying in shape just in case something happens. Cause you never know you have the last two pay-per-views, something went down, something went wrong. And you know, I've always been willing to step up as I stepped up the last fight I had at three weeks notice. So this time I'm like, you know, I'm going to Toronto tomorrow uh, for yeah, a charity right. trip uh, out there with Penny Appeals. And the last time I was there with them, that's when I got the call to fight Gilbert Burns. I'm like, man, I hope something like this happens again. So right. I'll be ready for it. Yeah, so that'll be cool. There he is. Ladies and gentlemen, Flash Gordon. Just want to congratulate you. so nice. What's up? I was about to say, what are you, are you literally – Using an iPhone 2G? What's going on with your camera? This is a <laughs> MacBook Pro. Dude, your camera's terrible. Yeah, that helped. That That's helped. Better, yeah, that is better. <laughs> hey, want to congratulate you now that I'm looking at you face-to-face -face on an unbelievable night. UFC 295, welcome Flash Gordon. But, dude, I'm telling you, that was the highlight of the night for me. Top of my list, no question about it. Seeing you get that win after all the, frankly, bad luck in the year 2023 leading up. I know for Bilal, that was a highlight too. So congratulations, bro. I know you've talked a lot about it and it's a couple weeks removed, but you got to still be buzzing a little bit off of that win, man. Yeah, uh, Jason, that's really nice of you, but you could have texted me like two weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, definitely happy. And I mean, I know, I, I know I've sh I showed glimpses of that potential in my last few fights but they you know ended in weird ways and I think you know maybe it was a good thing I'm flying under the radar um I'm way better than what my fights have shown you know and I think now it's going to start really coming out and you know my, I'm I'm kind of relevant right now you know my name's being thrown around out there. So, you know, all good things from now, hopefully, you know, uh, it's been a long road, but here we are. And yeah, I'm definitely, definitely really happy. What uh, I was going to say, um, now that you, you called out Moicano, he was supposed to fight Jalen Turner. Jalen Turner popped up. Is that another name that you're just like looking at to go against right now? Should I use my, my mic? It's not connected to anything, but it looks more professional. Yeah, it looks cool. <laughs> you gotta have a better background too. What'd you say? You gotta get like a better background than your freaking um, target target uh blinds. Um real funny law. So yeah, I mean, I want a top 15. I think I deserve it. I think with a performance like that, also, you know, Mark. Obviously has some good credentials. His only loss was to Grand Dawson, you know, four and oh before that. So I think, you know, I think that it makes sense. And yeah, I would love to fight Honato. Uh, I was going to call him out, but I heard he was going to fight Jalen Turner. So 
But then this thing with now Jalen's fighting Bobby. But unfortunately, I have to take care of something on Monday that's going to have me out for, you know, a few weeks. I'm having surgery on my wrist. Hmm. Uh, but fast recovery, it's kind of like repairing a meniscus uh, is what they compare it to. You went into the fight injured? Cast. What's that? You went into the fight injured? No, I heard it in the fight. Oh. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to have a cast above my elbow and my arm wow. is going to be bent, is going to be bent like this. So I'm going to lose my biceps. Hmm. But, <laughs> <hello>. <laughs> um, but, you know, six weeks in a cast, probably four weeks of PT or something like that after that. And then, you know, hopefully by March, maybe April. Uh, so it's not that much time. And plus it's Christmas. And, uh, you know, but I'm like trying to stay as fit as possible, man. I, I haven't really, let me learn, I haven't gained uh, like a ton of weight at all. I've been staying lean. I'm in the gym. And I knew, like when I, when I went to the orthopedic, I knew he was like, you have to have surgery. So I was like, man, if I get fat right now and then have surgery already fat. Good point. Yeah. And I'll just blow it completely <laughs> yeah and be like 210 when i come back so and and you don't uh, want to do your weight cuts have been very good lately right yeah, yeah really easy super super smooth super easy i barely do anything fight week um so yeah it's but like you know i'm not like 26 anymore you know uh so i need to like stay on top of my shit as best as possible <laughs> yeah so, uh, so you're going to play a game show tonight, which we certainly appreciate. But we're going to move. We're going to keep moving right along. You can hang on these topics. We're going to skip December 16th, Bilal. We'll be. We've beaten you up enough about that. But this bare knuckle card this weekend. So, so we were in Milwaukee Saturday, and Ben Rothwell was cornering some fighters. Whatever, Saturday, last Sunday, two Sundays ago. So Rothwell has Rothwell MMA out in what is it, Kenosha? Um, so he's cornering some fighters, and I make eye contact with him, and he thinks I'm John, and he like sees my hair, and he's like, yeah, but I like the hair, you know. I'm like, all right. So after the <laughs> I go over and tell him it's not me. Um, but this dude, he's fighting Todd Duffy this Saturday. He's like much bigger than this dude in bare knuckle. Eddie Alvarez, Mike Perry, the main event. Like, he's I'm watching Todd this. Duffy? Todd Duffy. Yeah. Am I? No yeah. I see. Todd Duffy's like not a, a, as yeah. big, right? I mean, I mean, and no, no gloves, man. I mean, so it's fascinating. But I'm, I'm watching that all day long Saturday night. Find a way to mix that in. No. Oh, uh, bro, I'm watching freaking. Uh... I'm watching what's called right away uh, for Mike Perry against Eddie Alvarez. That's going to be sick. And then, uh, yeah, I just want to watch that one. I want to see how that one goes. Both guys look great. Mike Perry's look dominant in his bare knuckle. Like bare knuckle is meant for him. Eddie Alvarez, the king of freaking the underground, is looking good. Um, so I think both of them two are just going to bang it out. Who do you got, Jared? Uh, Mike Perry's a big boy. So is Eddie. He's a humongous 55er. But Mike Perry's got some really good boxing, man. Uh, Eddie, you know, I think was a more well-rounded martial artist. But um, who has more bare knuckle fights? Mike Perry. Mike Perry does? Yeah. I mean, I would love to see Eddie win. I'm a fan of his. But I think maybe Perry edges it out. Like a split decision when Yeah, I think he's just way too too big for him. Humongous. That's the only reason I'm giving it to him. If Eddie if they were the same weight class, then I would give it I would give it to Eddie. But Mike Perry and he's good he's a good boxer, bro. His boxing experience, obviously a ton of MMA experience and more bare knuckle experience. Plus he's a lot bigger. Yeah. And there's not really much room you can move around in there. And Mike Perry is one of those that's gonna be in your face. Like you break creek in what's face his teeth. It's gonna be a bad night for anybody that's in front of him. Like Luke Rockhold, he's a he's a yeah. big 185 pounder. Mike Perry broke his teeth. Like Eddie Alvarez, I've seen him in person. He's, I mean, he's thick right now, but he's not like big. That's all, yeah. Yeah. All right. So, well, 
uh, let's talk about some of these UFC fights this weekend. Uh, we, I know we'll get to them in BICs, but this card, at least the top four fight, this card all over the place. So before we get to some of these BICs, so Puna's fighting, Puna Hele Soriano versus Dustin Stolfus. I'm really anxious to see if he can avoid bumping his fucking head in the cage walking in. You remember that fight when he bumped his head in the cage walking Dude, in? Dude, that was the <laughs> funny thing. He like slapped at it. <laughs> yeah, I think that was against Brendan, if I'm not mistaken. Eh, maybe not. But Dude, I'm really rooting for this guy, man, because I think he has a bright future, but you got to string together victories, you know? Um, and he's yeah, had that's a the part, right? Because when you come in, you have all the – he had a lot of hype coming in because he had a good contender series fight, and then they throw you to tougher guys. Like, he's not fighting weak guys. He fought Brennan Allen, uh, younger, hot prospects, and they know every fight he's in, he's going he's gonna to bring it. So they're going to give him those fights that you bring it with, and some of the time just you get stuck with a hard fight. And his last fight was – he went against the killer. That Russian, his body kicks were nasty. Right. And I know he's been dealing with like injuries here and there, but yeah, I'm I'm rooting for him. Hopefully he does it. But these Hawaiians, man, him and Dan Egan, they're too tough for their own good. And they're like, they don't care who's in front of them. There, there wasn't a fight anybody. Yep. Well, come other- here, though, I want to talk about uh Jared's teammate, Ian Gary. What's going yeah. on? With, what's going on with your boys over there? What's dude? up? Is it still Machado Gary, isn't it? Right? Doesn't he have two last names? But when you're when you're seeing everything that's going on, are you like feeling bad for him or? No, I don't feel bad for him. He <laughs> he he incited this nonsense. I mean, dude, look, like he he comes off his his attitude is you know cocky and arrogant, which is what the fans want to see. So I don't want to blame him for that, you know, because he's trying to play the role of a fighter and trying to get that shine or whatever. But then he's got all this stuff with his wife. And, you know, it's a, it's a sticky subject, man. Was he liked in the gym? Like, I think Brendan Allen yeah, was he's a, and like that. He's a yeah. great person. He's a super nice kid. He says hello to everyone. He's always smiling, super nice to everyone. He's not, he's not a, you know, a dick in person. Um, and he was always nice. Like I never had a problem with him. I like the kid. I think he's, I think he's a great athlete. Also, obviously his striking is, you know, very, very good. And, you know, he's doing really well in, in, in the UFC right now, but then, you know, all this stuff came out and it's like, it's almost, um, I don't mean to like sound like an asshole, but it's kind of like fun to watch when people go through shit like this. Because it's like it's entertaining for us, you know, as as fans and as as the audience. Even though, like, I know him and I consider him like, I wouldn't say we're best friends, but we're like good acquaintances at this point, you know. And uh, we're friendly. We've always been friendly. Uh, I just like can't help but like laugh at it all because, first of all, the fans are brutal, dude, brutal, and they won't let anything slide then you got guys like that mma guru dude who has been going in on ian then you got people like sean strickland and you got all these other people commenting and fighters commenting and it's just like of course they're gonna this is like this is the worst group of fans and people to do this to to have to go through this with Hmm. (laughs) <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, uh, literally, I tell it. And then, like I said, when you got like, there's guys like Sean Strickland who just want to hate or just look for anything to be controversial about and put his opinion on, and it has like nothing yeah. to do with them. It's all and, clickbait. You got Jake Shields doing it too. Yeah. And you know they're doing it just to just to keep their name out there and use something to be you know stay relevant. And you know, smart, smart for all of them. It's actually good for Ian, man, because now he's he's literally getting faint like more famous off of it. And yeah, I feel like he's the type that that enjoys it. Like, oh, yeah, bro. And if he about. wins, if he yeah. wins, bro, he's gonna feel like he's gonna be the man, or feel like he's the man, you know. And you know, it's just uh, it will all pass eventually. You know, no one's gonna care in a couple of weeks or whatever it is. If he loses, it's just gonna be, it's gonna be a freaking. I can't even. Imagine what they're gonna do, you know, if he loses, bro. How, what, yeah. how these people are gonna react, and how he's it's gonna react. To get kicked, kick, kick you while you're down, bro. They're gonna rape him while he's down. You know, who, and, you, who you got, Luke or him? Like honest opinion. 
Bro. I think Luke is the more well-rounded fighter. Well, I know that he is because I've trained and rolled with both of them. I never sparred. I never. I don't really spar Luke or Ian. Obviously, I'm not going to spar Ian. The guy's six foot three and he's way bigger than me. Luke, I've moved around with, but we never really hard sparred. But I've rolled with both of them, and I know that Luke is definitely, and you know, he's better on the ground. Um, does that mean he can wrestle and take Luke uh, Ian down? I don't know. Can he? Of course. Um, on the feet, though, I think Ian has the edge and speed and just, you know, pizzazz, like wow factor. Like, but if Luke touches you, man, it's over. If he touches you, he's hits like a you know ton of bricks, and he's very focused right now. And I'm not going to say who I think is going to win, so I'll just leave it at that. Got it. Um. Yeah, Bilal, you never have problems picking people. But I got to be honest, you know, I host I host an MMA show here, so maybe I should know. But you talk about people not caring about this Ian Gary stuff in a couple of weeks. I promise you, I I don't even know what happened because I couldn't care less. I'm just being honest. Like, I care about the fight game a lot and I follow it. But I see like one headline. I swear to you, if you asked me for a million dollars to tell you what happened, I have no idea because I it's just so irrelevant to me. Am I nuts? No, I mean, it's. Like for us, we see it because it's like when you're seeing guys like Daniel Cormier, Henry Cejudo, like these guys are making videos about it. Like Jared said, they're all looking for clickbait. They're all looking for that one thing to talk about. Oh, they're talking about Ian Gary now. Let me make a video about it. Let me, it's like, bro, you're talking about a guy and his wife. Like they're married. Like, yeah, right. They do with you you guys. That, bro. Right. I don't know why people go there because it's so disrespectful. Yeah. You know, at the end of the end, the, and they have a kid together. So now it's like it gets a little grimy because. People are t like talking about his the kid, and it, that's when it starts to get like a little like um, I know people like the things that have been said. Like I know people that would kill people over shit like that. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? So it's it gets it's it's for me it's not it's not for me. Yeah. But, um, yeah. So let's talk about some of these fights this weekend. We might as well. You don't have to pick if you don't want, but Cody, if you don't mind, roll that green screen. Let's get to bullies picks. This car. Bilal and I were talking. This fight is just electric. This fight card, the whole thing for me. Can't wait. And especially after a week off. I know we got bare knuckle this weekend. I'll give that a little bit. But UFC fight night. Moody Center, Austin, Texas. Main card, 7 Eastern. So the first one, we're going to do four bicks tonight. Bully B. First one, welterweight division. Great matchmaking here. Sean Brady, number nine in the world versus Kelvin Gastelum. He is the number 11th ranked middleweight, I believe. So pretty close fight on paper. Sean Brady, minus 120. Brady was supposed to fight Jack Della Maddalena back in July. Had that septic bursitis in his left elbow, so had to back out there. His last walk to the octagon, he ran into Bilal. Remember the name, Muhammad. Who? Not his best night. Certainly not. Got technically knocked out in round two. I don't know if I got a little louder. It might be my microphone, but one of the better nights of my life. Sorry, but it's been more than a year. So, and facing a dangerous ve veteran in Gastelum at 170. I, he really interests me, Gastelum, in your division, Bully. Um, been more than 10 years since Gastelum won the tough 17 middleweight tournament. Just amazing. So, some ups and downs. His resume, just bananas. Fought for the middleweight championship. Really fought everybody. His best win, probably first round knockout of Michael Bisping. Sorry, Count. It's just crazy to even think about that. That was six years ago. Um, but as a welterweight, man, I mean, bi last time out, I know at middleweight, but big fight of the night against Chris Curtis. That was April 8th. I can't wait for this one. This may be the one I'm looking forward to most. Bilal, start with you. Fascinated to see which way you go on this one. Yeah, this one's very interesting, man. Honestly, especially because I want to see Gaslam at the weigh-ins. That's the, the key to me. I want to see how he looks at weigh-ins, even if he could make weight. I, like He wasn't making weight when he was younger. And right. Jared said, you're not 26 anymore. You're a little bit older now. And he struggled even making weight at 185. But he looks good now. He's talking. He's saying all the right things, saying, I feel good. I feel I'm in shape. Um, but you got guys like Brady, who hasn't fought since me. I don't know how he's going to come back after a loss. He seems mentally weak to me. He seems like a guy that you, he, when you're given excuses after a loss, it's like, all right, now I know you're mentally weak. When I see – you know, Jared's teammate, like Gilbert Burns, coming up with every excuse in a book after a loss. It's like, yo, you lost. That's it. Take your loss like a man. 
yo, I got, I got to get better. That's how guys grow. That's how champions grow. Even at Asanya, he didn't like say nothing after losing to Sean Strickland. He come with no excuse. He said, all right, uh, congrats to him. I'm move on. And, but that's a champion, champion's mindset. Like Sean Brady, still, uh, nine out of 10 times, I would kill him. All right, well, you got Gaslam in front of you. Let's let's see you kill Gaslam first. Yeah. Realistically, I think Gaslam stand up is way better. I don't think that Sean is going to be able to take him down. I don't think Sean is good at setting up his takedowns the right way. And I do think he's going to be tentative coming off of a knockout loss. And it's been like a year since he's fought. I do think he's going to be tentative in there. And I'm I'm picking Gaslam if he has a good weight cut. Flash, who do you like in this one? I think Sean is going to win a decision. Any reason why, or are you just going to just like say that? Yeah, I think he's going to be motivated. And uh, I, I, I listened to one of his interviews. He's been working with some mental coaches. And, you know, apparently, according to him, he's changed a lot of the way he's training. And, man, sometimes, you know, sometimes right. that, either, that either backfires on you or it really propels you. And after, like, I couldn't imagine losing to you. I would kill myself. So he's probably, he's probably really motivated right now. And I think that he thinks that he's the bigger, stronger 70 pounder and he knows he's got to take him down. So I don't think that, I think if he takes him down in the first round, then that's it, bro. Once he gets the steam rolling with the guy, like, like you gave him nothing. You were so stingy that night and he, he lost all his confidence if he takes Kellen down, then he's his confidence is going to build. He's okay, I can take this guy down. I can hold him down because he can hold down a lot of people. I think he wins. I think it's going to be not the most exciting fight, hmm. but I think he wins. I think he wins the decision. Bilal, I know you know you're lined up to fight for the title next, so this question may be irrelevant. But I know guys certainly are rooting for their former victims to win, right? It's like Sean Brady; all he's ever done is win, except he faces you, Bilal. So I bet there's a little party that wouldn't mind him having a nice statement win. This guy still rolls through everybody except Bilal Muhammad. A little bit. I mean, no. with, with my other opponents, like guys that I, that I actually like, like like guys yeah, that don't put excuses. Like Sean yeah. Brady, he's just yeah. annoying. His fan base is annoying. His his family that was messing me is annoying uh, and Philly sucks. So yeah, I want him to lose. That's true. Oh. All right, moving on. Second fight of four bantamweight division. I can't believe Rob font. We're going to talk about his fight and he's not on the poster. Four of his last five fights. He's been on the poster. He's not even a co-main event here against a former champ. I can't believe this isn't even the co-main event. Love it. So font slight favorite here. Um, Comes in having lost three or four, which it kind of shocks me a little bit because he seems like he has a little bit of momentum. I know that fight versus, versus Sandhagen last time out wasn't great, um, but he's making his third walk of 2023. Had that big first round TKO of Adrian Yanez. I think that is a part of it. That was April 8th in my, Miami. Loses to Sandhagen in Nashville August 5th. But that was a short notice opportunity. He was supposed to fight in Boston in his hometown against Song Yudong on the 19th of August. Um, but either way, nice to see a 36-year-old guy making the walk again. Um, but getting the former flyweight king, Ben Davis, who we called APFC with, was talking about the pecs or tits, I guess, that Figueredo actually you know, has some muscle up there because he can now. I'm thrilled not to watch him make cut all that weight. Um, but man, it's like, I see that he fought Moreno four straight times. And like, every time I guess it made sense, but I see that on paper. I'm like, I just don't like that. Like that, like what fought the guy four straight times, you know, I just, anyway, but moving up here to 135 and getting a big guy, man, who can bang, you know? So I don't know, man, I'm fascinated to see this jump up at 135 for Figueredo. Jared, who do you like in this fight? Rob, I like Rob, man. I think that his... I just think that he gets it down on the feet, man. Bully, you think great. you think Figueredo, uh, how do you expect him to look up 10 pounds? I mean, he was always big at flyweight, so he was always a bigger guy. But I think Rob is a big, big bantamweight. And Rob's got really good boxing. He got really good power. For him to even, yeah, knock out Adrian Giannis, he looked good inside the pocket there. And San Higgin, I know, was taking him down pretty easily, but San Higgin's been on a roll. He's been killing it. And he's so slick with the way he takes guys down. Davison, he's going to try to bang with you. He always comes to bang. And I don't want to bang with a guy who has, I think, more power than him. I think Rob could finish him here. And Davison, I think it's a bad matchup for him. 
at 135. Unless Davidson comes out, tries to grapple, his wrestling feels good. Maybe he has more energy now um, that he doesn't have to cut as much weight. But I just think stylistically it's, it's a bad matchup for him. It's a really good matchup for Rob. I think so too. Vegas has some respect there for Davidson Figueroa. It'll be interesting to see. Let's move on to the co-main event in the lightweight division. Jalen Turner taking this one on short notice. He is the 12th ranked lightweight facing Bobby Green, the 13th ranked lightweight. Frankly, Jared Gordon should have that ranking. Plus 170. Clash of the head. Sorry, we won't go back there. But Jalen Turner, just such a fascinating fighter for me. You know, it's like I I was going to say, you know, I, I can't believe he makes 156, but it's like he didn't last time out. You know, missed at UFC 290. But that was maybe the toughest performance we've ever seen in the octagon out of a, out of a winning opponent in Dan Hooker. It's like Jalen Turner broke Hooker. Not mentally, like physically. Broke his face, broke his arm. Still loses that fight. So it's back-to-back split decision losses for Jalen Turner. Previously was to Mataj Gamrat. That was back on March 4th. I love this matchup for Jalen. Really interested to get your take on this flash. King Green, man, unbeaten in 2023. The no contest, obviously, against you, followed by wins against Tony Ferguson, Grant Dawson. In impressive fashion, can't take it away from two performance of the night bonuses. By the way, you should have gotten a bonus in New York, Jared. Sorry, had to get that out there. King Green turned 37 in September. He can bang. He can finish fights, making his 24th octagon walk. Bilal, co-main event. We'll start with you and finish it up with Jared. Who do you like in the co-main event? This is a very interesting one. You know, Jalen t- taking this fight on short notice. Jalen looked great in his last fight, even against Dan Hooker in a loss. But mentally, I don't know where he is because you see, you hear him in interviews now, and he's like, oh, I kind of got forced into this fight. And, hmm. you know, I had to say yes. So it tells me that he's not motivated, or maybe he's having a really hard weight cut and he missed weight against Dan Hooker. So if that was a hard weight cut with a full camp, I'm sure it's going to be a terrible weight cut. Uh, with a short notice camp stylistically I like Jalen uh, but just mentally and you know Bobby has a, a nice run going right now and he has momentum going right now I think that I'm gonna go with him just just because of the way Jalen's talking his energy he's giving off he just doesn't seem like he wants to be there and uh, if you don't want to be there it's, it's you never want to be in the cage and you not want to be there so I think I'm gonna go with Bobby here he's got, he's got a weird style and I think Jalen's just going to keep moving forward. And a guy like Bobby, who has slick movement side to side, uh, you need to watch out for his power. And I think Jalen, if he has a hard weight cut, uh, that power is going to start taking effect on him. Jared, you obviously shared the octagon with Bobby Green. Do you expect him as a plus 170 underdog to beat Jalen Turner in this spot? I think I agree with a lot of what Bilal said. He's hot right now. He's on a streak. A guy like that, super confident, feeling himself, had a whole camp for Dan Hooker, who is relatively the same, basically the same size as Jalen Turner. Same style of fighter, basically. So I'm edging towards Bobby, especially because it's a better look for me. <laughs> right. Yeah. But I think Jalen is super dangerous, man. He kicked Hooker in the head easily. And Bobby, hands down, getting out of the way, punches and kicks. You know, throws a punch, gets brings his head to the left or to the right. One of those legs come up, man. That's it. Yeah. He's going to stay straight up and down with him. He can't move his head too much, and, but that's all Bobby does. He moves his head, hands down, moves his head. Maybe he'll change his style. I don't know. I doubt it. Uh, let's see. Maybe he'll wrestle. So I'm leaning Bobby, but I think it's a very, very, very hard fight and Jalen could get it done. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see Jalen on the scale. Bilal, I got to be honest, you swayed me. Like, I was loving this matchup for Jalen Turner and still, until you started talking, and now I don't really feel the same way I did prior. But I guess that's good. You know what you're talking about. All right, main event, Armand Sarukyan, Benil Daryush. Sarukyan, man, this dude. Won seven of eight, only lost that close fight against Mataj Gamrat, June of 2022. Since that, back-to-back wins over Demir Ismagulov and Joaquim Silva. So Sarukyan hasn't been on a pay-per-view since he beat Matt Travola in January 2021. And I feel like some of these like casual MMA fans, maybe you would put me in that category, but haven't really seen all of his fights. Uh, he lost his UFC debut to Islam Makhachev, but then he beats Olivier Aubameau-Mercier. We know his story. He hasn't lost since. Obviously, just retired. Multiple millions, multiple PFL titles. Um, 
so I'm just fascinated though. Benil Darius plus 250. If I'm not mistaken, he closed at like minus 140 against Charles Oliveira, or he was certainly favored. A lot of people liked him to beat Oliveira. That's a quick sort of flip of the odds there. Um, but Vegas tends to know stuff here. So Benil certainly respects Armin a lot. He thinks he's a future champ. Um, I don't know, maybe a little dad strength here for Benil Darius. Bully, uh, I'm fascinated about with this matchup. The line does intrigue me a little bit. You like Darius or Sarukyan in the main event, Muhammad? Yeah, this line is crazy. Where's the the disrespect for Benil? Right. And it's not like he lost to a bum. And he was looking good at the beginning of that fight. He took Oliveira down. He he was had doing well. Oliveira just caught him. Anybody could get caught, anybody could have an off night. But before that, he was on a nine fight winning streak. Uh, I just think Armand is he's young and he's so good. He's good everywhere. He has good striking, good gra- wrestling, good grappling. And he, um I think that I'm gonna go with Armand here. I think, you know, he has momentum right now. He's one of the, he gave Islam one of the toughest fights he's ever had. And it was short notice for both of them, but it was still just a, a tough fight. I think that his kicks are hard. His, uh, his striking is not as clean as Benio's. I don't think he has as much power as Benio. Uh, I just don't know where Benio, like even when he's talking as well, he's just like, yeah, I don't know what I'm going to gain from this fight. I just like fighting the young hungry guys. And I want to, I want to fight the best guys in the world. And it just tells like you're not. He doesn't seem motivated. Like when he was on that night fight winning streak, and I'm gonna fight Oliveira. I know I'm gonna fight for the title next. Now you lose. It like deflates you. So you're like, all right, now I'm just fighting kind of like to fight because you know winning here, it's not gonna move you up the rankings because you're fighting somebody low, way lower in the rankings than you. And Charles still had to fight for the title. You still have McGregor coming back. You still have like Poirier still up there, and he doesn't want to fight you. So it's like. It's going to be a hard road back to get to the title. So I feel like now he's at the point where he's like, well, I'll just fight these young guys and just test myself against them. When every single fighter he's fought has been a tough guy. He's looked great against some of the best guys in the world. I just think Armand, young, hot, hungry, uh, he has that hunger in him. I think that's going to play a big part in it. So Bully thinks a favorite too much for Benil Darius, Jared Gordon, another one in your division. Who do you got? I'm going Benny, man. Yeah, plus 250. Dude, he can grapple his ass off. Do you think he's going to go for the takedown? No, I think he's going to strike first. Yeah, sure. but even in the striking, he literally, like, he, he gets hit to give a hit. So Armand is, like, so good with his kicks. Let he's going to keep that distance. Can, before you interrupt me. <laughs> I love it. Um, He, I think he's... I don't understand how the line is like that. This is ridiculous. It should be like, you know, maybe minus 180 plus 180, you know. Yeah, plus. well, that that to me makes yeah. more sense. And that's whenever well, that happens, though, whatever yeah. the sport may be, it makes, you know, Vegas well, certainly knows. Armin, you know? Exactly. But exactly. People, you're going to trust the fans? These people are idiots. I mean, <laughs> well, I, I mean look, what he, look, how, look how he fought Gamera, dude. Dude, he made – he looked great in that fight and did really, really well. And we saw Armin's fight with Gamrot. He – I think he probably won that fight, but they gave it to Gamrot. And I just think that Benil shows up and he's a veteran, dude. And he's he's so – he's so um, funky, bro, the way he – grapples he's long he mixes it up he's not just a wrestler he's a jiu-jitsu wrestler you know back and forth doesn't stop moving go he's in great shape all the time can strike southpaw i think i think he i think he gets it done i can't wait to watch that fight you're not alone there so what's up with super stats was he supposed to compete in a game show tonight what's up Ralph? Yeah, like i messaged him he's not replying anymore it's... i mean i know bellator got shut down you get shut down too Ralph. what's up Ooh. what's up Ralph? No, I mean, I'm just messing. I, 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 but I, I was interested to talk trade, to him. Yeah. Yeah. I was interested to talk to him, you know? Yeah, um, no, I, I was excited. He was excited for it yesterday. I don't know, maybe something popped up, uh, but I sent him the link and everything. He just didn't he doesn't want to get on here because he's scared to lose to me. Probably. Probably. I, mean, I thought it would be a good match. Dude, I had some good some good stuff for you, man. It was going to be a hot one, but... uh, I don't yeah. know why I'm even bothering to play this game. Dude, the you're going to get, you get a gift card. The amount of money and gifts you guys owe me... 
Dude, you literally, you Dude, literally had a pair of Jordans. Shout out to English Soul for hooking up a pair of Jordans. Uh, you should be shut down, dude. This game show should be shut down. <laughs> would you prefer another pair of Jordans or would you like a rug? What? Do not want a rug. <laughs> where, fuck, where would I put a Persian rug in my house, dude? Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, All right, well, well, dude. So, Jared, are you going to Vegas for the final pay per view of the year or what? Beautiful. Love it. We're going to have some fun there? out there. Yeah, we'll be out there. You know, oh, creeping maybe, around. Creeping maybe around. Maybe I'll stay high here. I appreciate that. Yeah, maybe I'll shake your hand. I'll I'll be able to congratulate you in person. person. All right, well, well, if Super Sats isn't here, I think we're going to get out of here in episode okay. 120. For the great Bilal, remember the name Mohammed and Jared Gordon, Cody Merrow at the helm. My name is Jason Anik. We'll see you next Thursday on Remember the Show. We appreciate you being with us. Have a good night. Peace. <laughs>